Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to the channel for today's video. And you click this video because either your drum brakes suck or they're sticky and you need to adjust them. So today we're gonna cover all that and show you how to fix all your problems with drum brakes and make your drum brakes great again. So here is the example we're gonna be working on today. It's my XR100 and I've been dealing with it's really crappy drum brakes that are on the front and the rear of this bike for over a year now. And it's really annoying because this front drum brake is super, super sticky. And I'm gonna show you guys the reasons why it could be sticky and how to fix it. So let's jump right into it. So there is a couple different reasons it could be sticky and I'm going to show you how to adjust it as well if that's what you need. So the first reason it could be sticking is because of this screw that goes through the pivot point of the actual lever is too tight and it could cause your brake lever to stick that way uh, as well as if the bike's been out sitting. Now this bike when I bought it, it had been sitting outside for quite a while and that's where she stored it and it got rained on and because it got rained on rain actually went down inside the, the tube itself that has the cable that goes down to the drum brake and the cable itself was like rusting and sticking inside of the actual like shielding I actually went and replaced my front brake line cable and that helped it out quite a bit with be a lot easier to pull and not sticking in like just getting stuck a bunch now the next thing that comes down from there is gonna be this little pivot arm here on the front of the actual like hub and this guy in here is where it pivots on as you pull this brake and this arm is gonna actuate like so and it gets stuck and sticky down in there so I'm gonna go ahead you're gonna get I'm gonna pull this front wheel off and I'll actually show you how the drum brake is actuated and why it's getting stuck and it also can get stuck if you have this little arm here is improperly set so on the end of the arm there's a little tiny guy down in here that's just like your shifter where it's got a whole bunch of teeth and you can adjust the pitch of it by pulling it off and rotating it one and then sliding it back on because it's lined with teeth so it's like geared if you will so if you have this improperly adjusted it could be overextending and pulling the the piece inside too far and it's getting it jammed up and stuck so I'm gonna go ahead and we'll show you how this all works works and how you can fix it and what kind of issue you actually have going on. So to remove our front tire, we got a 14 millimeter bolt on this side and we have a 19 mil on the other side. So let's go ahead and let's just pop this wheel off. Okay, now we're gonna pop this guy out here, which is the hub which has your brakes. Now, one of the reasons that your drum brakes could suck is because you've actually worn out the inside of this hub uh, and you've just worn it away so much that the pads can't really contact the outside of the hub. So that could be something you have to replace is the entire hub of the wheel if your drum brakes suck and you've already replaced the pads. So now you can see here, we've got our drum assembly. Now, the special piece that's making this stick, and this is odds are what your issue is, is this guy right here. So as we pull the brake lever, you can see this piece tries to rotate and spread the pads apart but you can see how it spreads it apart. Oh, and there you go, you can see it's gotten stuck. So what happens over time is as this gets corroded and beat on and rained on, is the actual piece of barrel here inside the drum that spins just gets gummed up and super sticky. In order to fix that, we just gotta pull these pads off and then remove this drum piece. Now, another thing you do wanna check while you're in here is just how much brake pads you have left, because if you don't have any pad left, well, of course your drum brakes are gonna suck. So as you guys can see here, it comes and tapers out towards the edge. Now, if this was all just metal and there was none of this pad left up here, obviously you need to change out these brake pads. Now to change out the brake pads, we're just gonna go ahead and pull out these two springs here. Now here you can see the piece I was talking about when you adjust is you would take this little bolt out here and you can pull this arm off and then change the positioning on this little gear here. This is what's gonna change how much brake is actually being applied and how much it's splitting apart the pads to push against the drum of the front brake. Now that's the same idea on the rear brake. Uh, it's the same, same actuation of this piece here spreading apart and that's what pushes the pads against the drum. So now we got ourselves a pair of needle nose pliers and we're gonna go ahead and just try and and pull these little springs up and out of here without losing an eye. Okay, just like that, we got our first spring. And there goes our second spring. Now you guys will see that the pads come right off. Okay, so now we've got the pads removed. That would be how you actually swap the pads. Now this is the part here. You guys can see that's trying to like spin and actuate inside the drum. Odds are this is where your sticking issue is coming from. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take a 10 mil, I believe, and pop this bolt off. And there's a little keyway thing here up on top and that's what keeps this thing from coming off. So let's go ahead and let's pop this sucker off. Now, if it's your first time ever taking this, you might wanna loosen this bolt up while it's still attached inside the bike. But I've had this off a bunch before, so I know it's not seized. And let's just go ahead and we're gonna loosen this sucker off. So here's our keyway. That's what sits up in the top groove of this arm to keep it from turning. Now, one other thing I want 
want you guys to note, and I don't know if you can see, on here there's a little tiny dot in the center of the like gear piece, and then there's a little tiny dot on the arm, and that's what you want to have lined up with each other to actually have this in the proper location. If it's out set from either way, uh, it's just not going to work properly. Now underneath there's also a tab with an arrow. You want to make sure when you put this back together, this tab with the arrow is facing downwards at the ground. So now we'll go ahead, we're just going to pull this guy off. I might actually need to pop this piece out of the so I might need to just go ahead and crack these ones up here first, which is part of your adjustments. So we're just gonna crack this top nut. And then the other thing is we gotta crack this bottom nut. Pull it off the threads, which is always fun. Like that, you let that kind of fall down. And now you can pull the cable up to the top and out to the side. And then this guy comes off like that. And now you have this part completely disassembled. So now we can go ahead and finish pulling this arm off. All right, so we got our arm off. It just took a bit of finagling because these threads in the back, uh, they've been messed about quite a bit because they're old. But there you go, that comes off. Same with your little plate, that guy comes off. Now you're left with this drum piece that would spin and now just spinning it, it does not want to spin very cleanly. I can feel it's just like hella gunked up and gross. So we're just gonna literally pop this out and push it out like so. And now this is where we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna clean this out and we're gonna clean this piece here, this barrel, and then we're gonna reassemble it. And that is gonna be why your drum brakes are sticking. If you guys have learned something new, make sure you guys click like, click subscribe. And uh, yeah, let's show you how to clean this up and get it prepped up so this thing doesn't stick anymore. All right, so I went and I've cut up some 220 grit sandpaper. We've got this guy here. I'm gonna wrap this sandpaper around an extension so it becomes nice and skinny like so. And then we're gonna take that, we're gonna stick it inside of where the brake was. And we're just gonna sand this guy up, get it nice and cleaned much better. Now I can already see that it's nice and shiny inside of there, which is great, exactly what you want. Then once you've got that cleaned up, you can take that piece of sandpaper and we're gonna sand down this guy here. Much better, now it's nice and smooth and we can see metal again. It's no longer like super corroded and rusty and see all of our rust is now inside the sandpaper. Cool, now that goes in there. That should be nice and fresh. Oh man, and now it turns like absolute butter compared to before. Before it was like crunchy and gross feeling. Now this thing just spins no problem. Now to prevent this from happening again, or at least in the short time anyways, we're gonna take some Never Seize here, which is pretty much just like a grease. And we're just gonna smother some Never Seize on the drum here, this barrel, whatever you wanna call it. And this is gonna stop it from rusting out and it helps keep moisture out. So it'll keep it spinning nice and smooth. So now we go ahead, take this, we're gonna stick it back in there. Now it's got never sees. And oh yeah, buddy. Now that's crispy. There's no grinding sound and it's like butter. Smooth, smooth as butter. So now let's go ahead and start throwing this back on the bike. So now we're gonna do the same thing we did prior and we're gonna go ahead and stick these back on. So we're gonna lay our drum, drum brakes up on. We're gonna stick the side that has the cutout with the original nub and the flat end goes down with the piece we just removed. Now the fun part is gonna be getting these springs attached back in. So we're probably gonna go like this. We're gonna get the one started that goes in the backside and we're gonna just manually pull that apart like so. Now the other one, they're sticking the backside. Same thing, grab our needle nose pliers. Watch your eyeballs, kids, as their springs and anything that's sprung can spring out and get you in the eye. Just like so. Now we got our drum brakes back on. Just make sure they're sat down in there correctly. You should be able to see on this plane that it is straight and that there's a nice gap in here all the way around. They're not crooked like this or like this. You're right, you wanna make sure that they're both flat. This piece should be in here like this, nice and flat, laying down, not sideways. So down like this is how it works. Now we're gonna start by putting our little cap back on. So we're gonna lay it up how it should be. It would be gonna like something like this. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna set this cap on. We're gonna take our arm, we're gonna stick this back on. We're gonna line up. Ah, so I've put this on already upside down. I can tell because the dots are opposite. So we're gonna come back over here and open this up. And we're gonna see if we can do this. I might have to take the spring back off. Okay, I gotta take the spring back off. One sec. 
All right, there we go. We've swapped it around. Actually, I believe the dot and the arrow and the arm all line up facing downwards. There you go. Now you got the dot, that, and the arrow all facing downwards. This arm now, when it's in there, actuates smooth as butter, which is awesome. Super stoked on that. We've got our dot, our dot, and our arrow all facing downwards. So now we can go ahead and we can go ahead and apply it and stick it back into the forks. So first we're gonna need to go ahead and this guy needs to slide in here. Turn your head, slide this guy back in the end. So you gotta pull this part where it kind of gets tricky and it's extra nice to have extra hands, but I don't. Crush the spring, slide the cable back in the drum like so. And that slides back up again. Then the extra fun part is getting this nut that's now all the way at the bottom. So I'm just gonna flip it upside down for a sec. So the nut falls back up into my fingers, pull the spring down. We're gonna start this nut again. Oh man, I can already tell this is gonna be so much better. All right, so this is where part of your adjustment comes in and this is gonna be like setting kind of like how much tension is on this when you go to pull it by moving these two nuts up or down. So what you wanna make sure is when this is set is that this stays flat. When you set this piece on and if it's like this where it's spread apart some, you know that the brakes are already me rubbing and you might not be able to fit it back in the drum. So you wanna make sure that this piece here is flat and doesn't, has not been spread apart yet. Man, that's sick, I'm stoked on that. I came together great. So now we'll go ahead, just tighten these guys up. So yeah, if you wanted more tension and more break closer to as you start pulling, you wanna slide this down. And if you want less, where it's where you have to pull in further for more braking, slide these bolts up. Okay, so we've got that. Now, if you also have this incorrectly set where this arm swapped over one or two, that's gonna have a very dramatic uh, difference. This is like minor adjustment. This is like major adjustment, but as you can tell, they already tell you where to stick it and stick the two dots together. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna stick this back on and assemble it. And we'll see how our uh, sticky part fixed. So if we've done this right, this should slide right inside the drum, just like so. If you've done it wrong, it will not want to slide in whatsoever. Now this part's always fun trying to get the hub to line up in the fork. Like so. But you know what? I almost forgot. So you got this little T-tit here. This nub, the little nub piece sits inside the swing arm piece. And then the bolt goes and threads up into it. Now we've got our wheel on, bolts back in. Now the first thing I can tell is, oh my goodness, this thing pulls so much smoother, like one finger, like, oh, it's like absolute butter. Now, as you can tell, it's out of adjustment. So now I go ahead and I'm gonna need to adjust the brake. All right, and just like that, now we've got a fully functioning front brake. Now, once you've set in kind of your main adjustment, which is gonna be these two nuts here. And once again, I told you, if you wanna set more, uh, it needs to be lower. If you want the brake to be looser, then you move it higher. Once you've kind of found your happy medium spot here, which is about there for me down towards the end. What you wanna do if you wanna adjust and change where it actually grabs the hardest at the lever. So if you want minor adjustments on your front brake, it's gonna be this guy here. Now, as you screw it out, that's gonna pull the lever forwards to where it bites. Now, if you want it to be closer in where the main bite is, you're gonna screw this guy inwards. So as it screws in, it's gonna pull in closer to the handlebar. Now, I like it that I can have my hand here and when I pull it all the way as hard as I can, I still have room between my knuckles, so I'm never crushing my hand, and that's with full brake applied. And now it doesn't stick at all, and it's super buttery smooth. So I hope today's video has helped you guys out on showing you how to fix and minorly adjust your drum brakes and how to turn them from sucky to not so sucky. So if you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure you guys leave a like, subscribe down below, leave a comment, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out, thank you.